All right, welcome. We got a new build for you today. I think you'll find it interesting. We're going to be using a pressure sensor, which looks like this. It's kind of got a green surface, so we're getting some interesting optical effects here. Uh, this is not fine in your kit. You'll have to get one of these from me. So let's switch views. Get a little scan this look here. All right. That looks pretty good. So you want to grab one of these from me. We're also going to use a, a buzzer today. And we will need a resistor. Approximately... 1,000 to say 10,000, anywhere in that range will probably be fine. I've got one here in my hand. I need to check what it is. So, let's take a look. I've got the resistor here. My finger is going to pinch it. And it reads 9.8 kilo ohms. So that'll work nicely. Turn that off. Grab one of those multimeters if you need that as well. If you're in the room. Alright, so these are all the parts we'll need. And let's go ahead and actually wire this part up, get some information from it. We'll uh, take a look at it on the stereo monitor, and then we'll have use this information to make the buzzer do something interesting. We'll, we'll tear this apart in little pieces here. Alright, so first off, Let's go ahead and take this pressure sensor and put it into one of these, two of these pins here. And one side needs the negative, but the, the buzzer is going to need the negative as well. So let's go ahead and wire up the blue rail as negative. And while we're doing that, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the... Uh, 5 volt. Let's go ahead and wire up the uh, red rail and make it 5 volts. All right. So one doesn't really matter which side we pick on our pressure sensor. Either side can be the ground. I'm just going to pick this side to be the ground, and this side I will have be my signal. So I'm going to grab this blue one and run it to my negative. And then I'm going to have a signal wire off the other wire. Let's move it back one a little bit. And I'm going to read that on A5. We're going to analog read that on pin A5. Okay, to help the sensor out, actually, let's go ahead and just gather our data from here. I don't know. If we will need this resistor, let's go ahead and test it first. We're going to make a pull-up resistor if we need it. I'm not certain that we do, but I'm, I think it'll help dramatically. So let's go ahead and do a little coding. We want to see what's going on. On the serial monitor, so let's go ahead and turn that on. We're going to want to gather some information from that pin A5. So I got to make a, a variable that we're going to gather it with. Let's call it sensor, or I should call it pressure sensor. And we're going to use that pressure as a little bucket to store this data that we're going to get from A5. Whoop, needs to be a capital. All right, A5. Well, I suspect the lowercase might work. Uh, let's see, pressure sensor equals analog A5. I got my little wire, my, <laughs> my resistor stuck to my arm there. Okay, so we're just going to read it off. Analog read it and store it as pressure sensor, and then we'd like to see what that value is. So serial, come on. Oh, fourth time's the charm. Print, have it jump down to a new line. Pressure sensor, 
I'm going to read it. I don't care if we delay it, we're just going to let it read it off. Because we can use a serial plotter, we're just going to look at what single number we are plugged in already. Let's just double check the board and the uh, port, it looks good. So let's go ahead and upload this. The wire on this one will be really simple. And the code will actually be very simple on this one. But the effect I think is pretty cool. At least I hope you find it as such. All right, wait for compile. Going a little slow. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and open up the uh, serial monitor and see what we get. All right, so we're getting some weird, whoop, just bumped my camera. We're getting some weird values going from, it's just jiggling all over the place. So to stop this, I'm, at, I'm here pinching it and I'm getting some weird values. So we're going to go back and use that pull up resistor. We're going to take this resistor and from the signal wire, hope you can see that all right, from the signal wire, not the ground side, that would be a pull down. We're going to run it all the way over to the positive side here. All right, so I went from here, all my little bridge, all the way over the positive side. And if you look at the serial monitor, you were pegged at the maximum value, which is 1023. And now let's go ahead and squeeze it again. So we're varying from 30 to 1023. Now I'm not squeezing to destroy this. I'm just squeezing to, you know, a decent squeeze, but not a destructive sque uh, squeeze on my pressure sensor here. And so we're going from about, eh, let's say 40-ish, all the way to 1023. Okay, that's pretty good. Now we're going to introduce our buzzer. One side is positive. I can remember that. I'm going to push the uh, buzzer over here. This side of my breadboard. I'm going to make sure this side goes into my negative rail, which you've already connected to my Arduino. And the other side, my signal, let's make that yellow again. And to get the buzzer to operate, we need the pulse with the PWM pins on the digital side. And if you recall, those are the ones that have the um, little squiggly line next to them. So that would be 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11. I'm going to go ahead and use 3 because it's closer to my buzzer. So that looks pretty good. I've got it in pin 3. So the uh, buzzer's hooked up. Now let's go over here to our code and get it to turn on or to have the frequency be what it is that I'm, my, you know, my sensor input is going to be the input for my buzzer. Now my sensor input is, is 1023 to, to, what did we say, 50 or 40. My buzzer, it wants inputs in hertz, which I think it's about 50 where it's audible for humans up to over 10,000. So let's go ahead and have this start at, we're going to want it to start maybe at 100 to 10,000. So we're going to want to remap the values we get from our pressure sensor so that they're intelligible to our buzzer over here. So let me show you how we're going to do that. We're going to need another variable. Let's call it, let's call it sensor data. That looks good. And we're going to want to store that mapped value as the sensor data. And we're going to map it or rescale it is probably a better word for that. So we're going to remap the pressure data. And it went from, as we saw on the monitor, it went from zero, actually it went from about 40 ish we go up down to 30 i know i saw some 30s let's go 40 up to 10 23 and we're going to remap that to something that the buzzer likes which should be around this goes 100 up to about 10,000, and we can adjust this later if we'd like all right then we're going to use the tone function we need to know the pin we use which was three and then 
we're going to have input the uh, sensor data like that. So we're taking this bucket, which is 40 to 1023. We're going to remap it from 100 to 10,000, and we're going to send that information into the buzzer. So that looks pretty good. Let's just go with this. We can adjust it in just a minute. Oh, we have a, an error. Sensor data, let's see, I have a spelling error probably. Sensor, oh, right here. Oh, it's an S. No worries. It's an easy fix. Give it a minute here. Actually, we need to give the old brain a squeeze. Oh, I hear it already. I hear it already. That's a very kind of an unpleasant pitch, but let's go ahead and squeeze this. I'll slide this over and you can see what I'm doing. And at the same time, let's take a peek at our values. All right, so they're fluctuating a little bit around 1023. I'll squeeze this. All right. I don't know if you can hear that change in my buzzer. My buzzer sounds like it's got a cold or something. So this sounds pretty cool, though. I'm going to pull this buzzer out just for a second and try the other buzzer. If I can find it real quick. Here it is. Let's give this one a try. like some overlapping of tones, like I'm getting two tones at the same time. Let's unplug this and just take a peek at it just for a minute. And we accomplished the objective. We saw what the pressure sensor does. And we got it to control the buzzer a little bit. But the buzzer sounds a little unhappy. So what I want to do is just take a quick peek at what I'm getting from the map data. So... Let's just print that out and see if we can figure out why it sounds a little weird. So we want to look at, so I don't confuse the two, I'm going to be looking at pressure sensor, but I also look at the sensor data. Let's go ahead and give this a title. Give that a title. And then the next line, I don't want this to jump to the next line, so let's take that out. print line and this is going to be sensor data all right that looks pretty good so let's just take a look at it see how we're mapping these out all right that's done I'm going to leave the buzzer off for a minute. So when we're at 1023, the sensor data is at 10,000. I'm going to squeeze it a little bit and then freeze it. So when we're at 65, this is at 365. Um, when I press in really hard, we're all the way down to 30. I wonder if it's confused by that by going below what our map value is. I'm going to send this to zero. And I'm going to raise this up a bit because I think we get a little more interesting action when we're between 1,000 and 10,000. And let's give this slight adjustment a try. See if we can get a little better sound quality. And compiling, uploading, and it says it is done. Let's try this. It starts off sounding really good. I 
Um, I'm going to try one more thing I just thought of that I left out. And that is, that is something I forgot to do. My apologies. I should use pin mode, with, like with what we did with our LEDs, but I didn't do it with our buzzer here. So we're in pin 3. Let's add this as well. Let know they're getting a signal input here. Give it another try. All right, done uploading. Let's plug this back in. Still sounds about the same. Yeah, that one is a hard one to plug in. All right, that was an easy one. I don't know if you can hear that very well. It seems to be jumping as I hear it. While I'm hearing it, I can hear it jumping back to uh, 1023, like in the middle. Let's switch back to the other one just for a moment. We won't play with this for too much longer. I just, you know, can't help myself. I just like to mess around. See what's going on. <laughs> that one sounds pretty cool. <laughs> that one sounds pretty cool. There's a little bit of of, um, I mean, my signal is, is jiggling a little bit, so we're getting this kind of two pitches back and forth, back and forth. We, we can see that. I actually can't see that very well. Now you can see it a little better. We seem to be jiggling between a few numbers. 1023, 1019. The lower ones actually makes it sound kind of interesting. Anyway, I think that sounds real nice. It's kind of got a, a creepy, a little bit of creepiness to it. Yeah, let's go with that. I'm gonna unplug this for it drives me nuts. Okay, if you're welcome to mess around with the numbers a little bit, uh, I highly encourage you to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video at this point though, because We've accomplished all of our goals, and we will see you on the next build. Enjoy.